DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, is a great piece of tech that's becoming more and more adopted by game developers and being used by RTX 30 series and 20 series GPU owners, allowing one to enjoy high visual fidelity gameplay while maintaining a smooth gaming experience. However, since it involves a lower render resolution, could your CPU have a major performance impact? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a few benchmarks to showcase the performance impacts that a CPU can have on your system when using DLSS. I'm sure most of you are informed or at least aware of what DLSS is, but just for the sake of laying out some groundwork, here's a brief explanation. DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling was an upscaling feature that Nvidia first introduced with its RTX 20 series GPUs. Essentially, it's an artificial intelligence based upscaling technology where it renders the game at a lower internal resolution, then using a trained neural network, it uses that information to intelligently upscale the image to your output resolution. That trained neural network is also downloaded to your GPU's driver so that you're able to run it locally. What this entails is that your game will be able to run much faster since it's rendering at a lower resolution. But due to the AI upscaling, the image visually can either be nearly identical to native or in some cases will look even better. DLSS isn't a one-size-fits-all type of solution, not yet anyways, where it's dependent on the game and the output can vary depending on how it's implemented. I remember when DLSS first was announced back in 2018, it wasn't as popular as it is today since there were hardly any games that supported it, and the 1.0 version wasn't all that great where in many cases it caused a weird blurry image over native. DLSS 2.0, things have improved greatly to the point where it looks as good if not better than native, runs very well, and is more widely supported. Popular titles such as competitive shooters like COD or or Fortnite have DLSS 2.0 support, where many people will definitely be using it to increase their FPS. The reason why only the RTX 20 series Turing and the RTX 30 series and peer GPUs only support the tech is because they have dedicated AI tensor cores which can be leveraged for DLSS. Old Nvidia GPUs cannot support this tech unfortunately. Now while that's all fine and good, when is DLSS best used or most appropriately used? If you've got an RTX 3080 or RTX 2060 Super for example, chances are you've probably at some point used DLSS. It's usually best used if you're gaming at a higher resolution with a huge pixel count like 4K and the game you're playing is quite demanding where you're just not able to get a smooth experience natively. That is where DLSS can help alleviate that performance, where the game's internal resolution can be set at something like 1440p or 1080p and then upscale to 4k while giving you a nice clean image and boosting performance. However, you can still use it at lower resolutions as well if you don't have the fastest GPU or don't game at 4k. Like for example, I use DLSS in Cyberpunk 2077 when I'd be playing on my personal rig which just has a 2080 hooked up to a 1440p monitor. Without it, the frame rate was all over the place, sometimes struggling to maintain 60 FPS and it wasn't a great experience. Although DLSS complements ray tracing as it's very computationally heavy on the GPU and can dramatically lower performance, but with the help of DLSS you can sustain good performance at the same time. But those are just some examples and you're free to use DLSS on whatever resolution you want. Want to play at 1080p but want like 500 FPS in control? Sure, go right ahead and upscale a 360p image. Although that's a pretty niche scenario and most wouldn't be utilizing it like that and would probably be opting for higher resolutions like I just mentioned. Now the key thing to to note here is that by using DLSS, you're rendering at a lower resolution. At higher resolutions, the GPU is generally the major bottleneck, and you are likely coming from a GPU bottleneck situation. But when you lower the pixel count, then all of a sudden the bottleneck will shift towards the CPU, and so what I wanted to know was that in those situations, can your CPU impact the performance uplifts of DLSS? Because if your CPU is considerably holding back the GPU at lower resolutions, then wouldn't it also impact the benefits of DLSS? To test this, I used four CPUs, the Ryzen 9 5900X, which I just recently reviewed, the Ryzen 9 3900X, Ryzen 7 3800XT, and the Ryzen 5 3600. Just to point out a couple things, 
In my review, I found that the Ryzen 9 5900X on average was about 23% faster than my 3900X, and the margin was similar for the 3800XT at 1080p. When compared to the 3600, we were seeing a massive 35% difference. If you were to look at things within the same generation, the 3800XT is about 10% faster than the 3600 for the average FPS. Now, those margins at a high resolution like 4K would be very small, where all the CPUs would be offering pretty much the same performance, as a GPU will be the major bottleneck here. But with DLSS, could we perhaps see the 5900X pull away from the rest of the pack? Will the 3600 fall too far behind? As for the rest of the specs, all the CPUs were cooled by a Corsair H159i Pro XT 280mm all-in-one liquid cooler. For the motherboard, we're using an MSI X570 Unifier. For the RAM, we've got 4 8GB 6 of Patriot Viper steel memory clocked at 3600MHz with tuned CL14 timings. The GPU is an Asus ROC Strix RTX 3090. For the storage device, we've got a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus, and powering all the components is an EVGA 1000G380 Plus Gold Certified Power Supply. Apply. So for the first title we'll be taking a look at control and also note all the games were tested natively at 4k with the ultra quality settings. At 4K, without DLSS, we can see all four CPUs delivering the same performance, with an average frame rate of in the mid-60s and 1% lows around 50, which wouldn't be too bad and, you know, that would pass for playable, but I could see this being a little problematic in those intense fighting scenes where you might have a lot of particle and, and explosive effects. In this game, there is no performance or balanced DLSS preset. Instead, the game makes you choose the render resolution yourself, and here I've chosen 2227 by 1253, so in between four 1440p and 1080p. With DLSS enabled, we can see that the margins from native haven't really changed as all four CPUs are still able to deliver identical performance, so that's pretty good. What's also really cool is that this just goes to show you that with DLSS, you can get a 4K-like image while getting significantly better performance. At 120fps average, the experience would be buttery smooth. But this game also does support ray tracing, so if you were to turn ray tracing on, that would also drop performance back down somewhere close to the native uh, experience but like I said that was already playable so then you get to enjoy you know good experience and you get to enjoy ray tracing visual quality so then I look at that as a win-win the next game on our list is Wolfenstein Youngblood, and this is a game where even at native 4K, we're seeing excellent performance across the board. 155 FPS average and 128, 129 for the 1% minimums, it would be a fantastic experience nonetheless. And it's in these kind of situations where I wouldn't even be bothering with using DLSS because the native performance is already so good. Still, what we're trying to see here are the performance impacts in case someone does turn it on, will they run into any sort of CPU bottleneck. With the performance DLSS preset that turned on, we're still seeing roughly the same performance from all four CPUs when it comes to the average FPS. However, the 5900X is about 6% faster than the 3900X for the 1% minimums, and that margin grows to 9% when compared to the 3600. Nonetheless, it's excellent performance, and just being able to push FPS to 230 frames per second at 4K, quote unquote 4K, is really something. Next up, we've got Watch Dogs Legion, and as expected, without DLSS, all four CPUs are seeing a major bottleneck and are virtually tied. This is another title like Control, where at native 4K, the performance would be acceptable, but the 1% minimums indicate your performance could run into a lot of variance, perhaps not being as smooth as the numbers may imply. Then with DLSS turned on, using the performance profile, we're seeing the 5900X, 3900X, and 3800XT deliver virtually the same performance, with the 3600 trailing behind behind them but isn't too far behind. At worst, we're looking at about a 6% deficit for the 1% lows, with the average frame rate being a couple FPS behind. The last game we'll be taking a look at is Death Stranding, as I'm sure at this point it's pretty clear what the general consensus is. At native 4K, we're seeing the same performance across the board. With DLSS, however, we see that while the 5900X is practically tied with the 3900X and 3800XT when it comes to the average FPS, we're seeing a 9% difference when it comes to the 1% lows. As for the 3600, it starts to fall behind even further, where it's 8% slower in terms of the average FPS, and we're seeing a 20% drop in regards to 1% minimums when compared to the 5900X. But again, we're still seeing a large enough performance impact from DLSS on the 3600, where it doesn't even matter at this point. So there you guys have it. After seeing the results, it's pretty clear that if you are targeting a high resolution like 4K with ultra settings, 
maybe with ray tracing turned on, then you don't have to worry about a major CPU bottleneck. Is there a CPU bottleneck? To some extent, in some games there might be, but honestly, the impact is so negligible that you'd still see a noticeable performance uplift from turning on DLSS and reaping its benefits. Even if we were to have tested at 1440p and targeted even lower resolutions, we'd probably be seeing similar results, or had we used an even slower GPU like a 2080 or 2060 Super, then the difference would have probably been even narrower. With that said, if you're a high refresh gamer or you're playing at a high resolution like 4K, then DLSS is a staple option at this point if you're using an RTX 30 series or RTX 20 series GPU. I'm honestly looking forward to seeing more and more games adopt this sweet technology, and hopefully Nvidia can get it to the point where it can just be turned on in the Nvidia control panel and be used for every game. Now that would be awesome. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.